Hey guys, welcome to Tech Tuesday. Matt from EO. Uh, today we are covering part two of the Wabasto episode. So if you haven't watched part one, we discussed you know, what the system actually is, uh, what it does, doesn't do, how it works. Uh, and in this episode, we're gonna get kind of more into the tech side of things with troubleshooting and uh, service recommendations and so forth. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you are finding value with this, please subscribe, click the bell so you get notifications uh, when we add new content. And then please, if you have comments, questions, recommendations, leave them in the comments section and we will uh, add that feedback to you know, the, the videos that we're gonna produce. So let's get into it. All right guys, so we're gonna go through a couple of different topics on this episode of Tech Tuesday, just basically addressing some, some issues with the Webasto and how to address those in the field um, or at home, you know, and then also some service and, and regular maintenance stuff that you can add uh, or do to the trailer to keep everything operating the way you want it with regards to the diesel heating system. Um, so the first one that we wanna cover is, you know, basically that your Webasto is, uh, smoking like gray smoke coming out of the exhaust or you're turning it on and it attempts to start and runs for a couple of minutes and then turns itself off and you don't get any heat uh, so the reason that the unit would turn on for a couple of minutes act like it's going to work and then turn itself off is uh, it's built up carbon on the burner there's a titanium screen inside that burner like a real fine mesh and the carbon particles build up on that and can also build up in the exhaust and uh, it basically the unit reads the electrical resistance across that screen and if the resistance is not in the correct parameters it will turn it off and it's basically to prevent it from you know damaging itself so uh, when you have carbon built up in the unit there's a couple of ways that you can address that now one of them and obviously the best way would be to remove the diesel heating element from inside the Webasto and disassemble it and clean that uh, screen and you know the inside of the burner and everything else but that's a big job right that's not something you're going to do uh, in the field and it's definitely not something that you're going to do even in your garage if you if you're not uh, pretty pretty savvy with tools and mechanical aptitude so uh, we're gonna we're not going to address that part of it in uh, these episodes because again it's pretty advanced and there is the opportunity that you can you could cause you know some problems but what we are going to address is a quick and easy way to uh, attempt to clean out some of the carbon and either a get your unit um, rerunning or uh, you can also do this kind of as a preventative. So if you are, uh, you know, you get home from a trip, you're going through the trailer, you're checking everything to make sure it's all good. It's Saturday morning, you can do this in the garage and uh, help to eliminate some of that carbon buildup after a trip. So the first part of it, tool-wise, what you need is a four millimeter Allen wrench and then an air compressor and a air blow gun or blow nozzle of some kind um, doesn't have to be super high pressure or anything like that uh, you know a decent amount of pressure is good but even like the onboard air uh, on your rig with a spray nozzle or a blow nozzle will uh, will work so first step we're going to remove uh, this front cover which is held on by four bolts now we've pre-loosened these because they are as long as monday and uh, so we've kind of cheated a little bit. But you'll pull this cover off and then we'll set it to the side. And inside here, now you actually have visibility of the Webasto unit. Now this is a 2020 model. It's brand new. It's never been used, hasn't been picked up yet. And so this unit may appear a little bit different than uh, the one that you have when you pull that cover off. The housing itself will look the same. 
as far as the black portion. But the internals here may appear a little bit different, but the operation and what we're showing you is gonna be basically the same exact thing. So you can see uh, this is the unit from Webasto itself. So that actually contains the burner, the uh, glycol pump that pumps the antifreeze through. And um, on the very front, you'll have a tag. Now on the older units, the tag is actually up on the top here. So if you do have a service need and you need the serial number, on the newer units, the serial number's here on this label. On the older units, again, it's at the very top up here, which is really, really not fun to get to. Um, but the best way to do it is like with a small, uh, small mirror, or like a pocket mirror, or a dentist mirror, or something like that. Um, but once we've ex once we've opened up the inside here, you can really kind of see how simple this actually is. So, all your burning takes place here, and you have your exhaust hose that's inside this white sock, and then your intake hose. And your intake hose will run into this black uh, intake filter, basically. So. Again, it's just a, a black plastic intake filter. And that's where we're going to access to start trying to push some of the carbon out. So we'll open it up and it just twists and pops off. So you pop the cap off and you can see now, you can actually see into the inside of the unit. So we'll take our air compressor um, and our blow gun. And if, you're, if you have an adjustable uh, pressure setting, and I would say set it at about 90 PSI approximately, somewhere right in that ballpark. So to ensure that you don't get in trouble with uh, your significant other because you made a mess in the garage, I would grab a trash can or a bucket or something like that and place it. You can look underneath the trailer and see uh, where the exhaust tube points down because you will be blowing out carbon and, and chunks of carbon. It's nothing big and it's not difficult to clean up, but just in case. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll take our air nozzle and we're actually gonna push air through the intake here. And that's gonna circulate air all the way through the unit. And then you can trace it. Basically it comes in in a loop and back out the exhaust. So if you have carbon buildup, uh, the first thing that you'll see when you start pushing air through this is you will see chunks of carbon coming out of the exhaust pipe. Um, when you do it up here, if you just kind of take your your finger and wrap around that port and then use your, uh, put your air nozzle in there. That kind of helps seal around it and build up some good pressure inside. And again, you'll do that, you know, give it four or five good blasts with the compressor. You should start seeing some stuff coming out uh, of, through the system. And uh, that, uh, you know, go four or five good blasts, see what you get as far as output. And then the next part of it, you'll do the exact same thing but you'll go through the exhaust pipe. So pushing back out this way. Now you don't often get, um, I've, never, I've never gotten carbon out here. So when you push through the exhaust, I've never pushed anything back through here, but what it's doing is it's blowing the opposite direction through that screen and it's breaking some of that stuff up. And then as it moves around, it breaks into smaller particles and lets it come back. So four or five good blasts, through the exhaust, through the spark arrestor and all of that. And you can also kind of help clean some of this uh, system out, the exhaust system, by tapping on it with a small, you know, a real small hammer or screwdriver or something like that, just to kind of help break up some particles. Don't beat on it by any means, but just give it some taps. Um, and then we'll go back to your intake, another four or five blasts. And I would recommend doing that five, six, you know, seven, eight times. I mean, you're not talking about a lot of time so um, do it until you get, uh, you know, some, some, until you stop getting carbon out. Um, and then what you can do from that point is then if you did have a, a problem that was causing the unit not to run, you can fire it up and give it a shot and see if it runs. And if you were just doing as maintenance, I would still recommend going ahead and turning it on and letting it work. Um, and that way, you know, you make sure everything good and it's and it not smoking or anything like that. If it is smoking or if it's still not turning on, then I'd run through the procedure again. Um, and then, of course, if, you, if you've done it, you know, a, a good amount of times and you're still not getting the result that you want, then uh, it's probably time to, to go to another step or, you know, to try to find a, a servicing dealer. But that's the first part of cleaning up 
carbon. And again, it's either to address uh, smoking or a no start or shutdown issue, or even just as regular kind of preventative maintenance to help that, especially if you've been at high altitude and now you're back down at, at normal, normal camp altitude or, or at home. Um, so that covers the first part of this. Again, just use an air compressor, blow through the system both ways, so through the intake, through the exhaust. And then of course, once you've done that and you're happy with it, it's working the way you want, you replace your filter cap, just snaps back on, and then your air intake will just sit inside uh, the unit here, put your front cover back on, and you'll be in business. All right, so the next thing we want to cover is what to do if your Webasto won't turn on. Um, and so a lot of times what will happen is you'll turn the screen on itself or the little controller and uh, you'll never get the green light or the green light will go off and uh, just stay white. So the screen's on, it appears like it's trying to work and sometimes the green light will be on but the unit itself won't turn on. So uh, first thing you wanna check is just the basics, right? So there's two fuses on the side of the Webasto that um, control, that are basically the fuses for that system. So they're directly on the, if you're looking at it, it'd be on your left side and you just check and make sure that both of those fuses are, are haven't blown for some reason. Um, the other thing you wanna check is actually in the battery management system itself in your TVMS, you do have, um, on some models, you all have a setting for the Webasto and it'll be an icon that looks like a water, like a wind and water symbol, basically. And so in some, some models, depending on how the red arc's configured, that will need to be on as well for the unit to work. But you've checked all of that, it's all working, um, but you're still not getting any, uh, any usage out of the unit. So what that likely indicates is that you've had a fault um, and the fault, the only one that I've ever actually seen um, is, is a fault that shows T-E-B, so Tom Edward uh, Bradley. And what that means is, um, and you can Google, if you see a fault code pop up, you can Google that and it will tell you um, what that fault code indicates based on the unit that you have. And uh, what that means is that at some point the unit's lost voltage. So you've either let the batteries drain or um, something along those lines. The batteries have gone flat and you've had to restart the system or somehow or another you had an electrical, um, you know, not necessarily a short, but a loss of electrical power to the Webasto and that has caused that fault. Now to find the fault codes, what we're gonna do is we're going to, instead of pressing the power button, and again, this is a brand new trailer, there are no faults in it most likely, um, but we're going to press the middle of the round dial and that's going to take us to a regular screen. Now, sometimes um, it, to get this to reset, it, it as, is as simple as setting the date and time. So the day of the week and the time. And the unit has to have that for whatever reason. It has to have that information for it to operate properly. So you can see your time here. Uh, in the top right corner of that little screen. So make sure that that's set correctly and it's not showing like a zero, 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 zero or anything like that. And then make sure your time of the week, or time, uh, sorry, day of the week is, is appropriate. So to get into our settings, we'll roll the dial to settings and click. And then we're gonna go first to weekday. So today's Friday, so we're correct there. And then to time. You can change between 24 hour and 12 hour time, however you would prefer. So it's 12.30 and it's 12.30. And so our time and our date are correct. To find out if we do have faults, we're gonna skip through all of that and go all the way over to error information. And then we're going to click. And you see we have a TEB code. Now the reason that we have that TEB code is because, again, it's a brand new trailer, they come in with the batteries uh, disabled, and so we need to reset that code. To do so, we're going to back out of the system and go to reset. And then we'll click OK, and now we've done a reset. 
and you'll see it pops back up and it usually does it really quickly. We'll go back to settings and roll back over to error information and we're gonna see an okay. So that means everything's good, the system's all fine. Um, that is as simple as it gets, basically. You can manipulate all of that from the controller. And now one thing that's important to note on those fault codes is if you are having an ongoing problem and you're planning to go to a Wabasto um, service center or technician uh, or calling tech support, uh, document that stuff. You know, document what the trouble code was and so you have that information, the steps that you've done at home so that can kind of expedite the process and, and also narrow down the information. Now, um, the other thing to keep in mind whenever your trailer, if your trailer has a Wabasto in it, when you pick, picked it up or when you pick it up, you will have a, I'm gonna step out for just a second. You'll have a box in the trailer. We always leave these in. And this is the box actually for the controller. And so inside this box, you will find a plethora of service manuals in your language of choice from, uh, yeah, every language in the book. And you'll also have all of the tech support numbers. So you can find uh, tech support even if you're in Croatia or Mongolia. But in the very first one will be your quick start guide for the controller itself and how that works. And then you also have a full documentation disk in there as well if you still have some way to operate or open a CD. So that'll be in your trailer and I would recommend keeping you know, that information with your trailer. But if you have done those steps, you still can't get it to come on, again, that probably indicates that there's some other type of fault in the unit um, that would need to be addressed. And, and if clearing it on the system doesn't fix it and it returns, then most likely it may be a code that can't be overridden by a simple reset on, on the screen. And in that case, you'd either, again, have to have the software or go to someone who does. But uh, that should get you covered on uh, that aspect of things. So. Again, if it's not, uh, if the green light's coming on and staying on, but your unit's not running, or uh, the, the green light comes on for a minute and it switches back to white, or uh, if it's not responsive at all, check your fuses, check for faults in the smart controller, um, reset them if possible, and then you know test your operation again. So thanks for tuning in to another episode of Tech Tuesday. We've done, uh, this is our third episode now, so our first one, if you haven't seen it yet, covers what to do if your batteries on your X1 get drained and how you uh, restart the system, basically. Our second video was uh, addressing just some basic tech information on uh, the Wabasto and how it works. And then our third video, this one, uh, we covered some in-depth troubleshooting and, and maintenance stuff. Now. Uh, subscribe because we are going to be producing content our goal is weekly new videos on how the trailers work how your trailer works how to troubleshoot set up um, and then we're planning on also branching into vehicles and just general topics as well so subscribe click the bell for notifications um, if you're not a member of our facebook owners group and you're a facebooker go to uh, patriot campers usa owners group on facebook uh, we'll put the link in the, the box below. And then lastly, leave us comments. If you enjoyed it, if you didn't enjoy it, if you found it useful, if you have suggestions on other videos that you'd like to see or just want to say, hey, whatever it is, leave us comments um, and uh, we'll see you around.